Louisiana has lost over 2,000 miles of coastal land since the 1930s. Even Avery Island, where they make that famous Tabasco sauce, is now in jeopardy. The LSU Center for River Studies and their partners have made a massive 10,800 feet square model costing $18 million to track the way the Mississippi River pushes sediment using a lighter than sand material to get some clues on how to stop the erosion. This model is made of 216 flat panels of high density foam carved to match mapping data down to the quarter millimeter tolerance. So the whole state of Louisiana is actually pretty flat. The highest elevation point in Louisiana is about 530 feet above sea level. However, that part wasn't mapped in their model. They also mapped Lake Pontchartrain, and it's 100% flat, even flatter than olive oils. Well, you know. And we know this is simply not true because a great globalist who went by the name of soundly used sophisticated equipment and precise calculations to show that even Lake Pontchartrain is more curved than the Earth's curvature rate. However, in LSU's model, it is completely flat, and this is most likely going to cause some errors in their erosion calculations in order to save the state of Louisiana. So their model is being used to predict where sediment will be pushed at in the areas it's going to settle at by the Mississippi River. However, for the calculations to be correct, the Mississippi must push the sediment against gravity for two whole miles. And this may be a bit slower than what their model will predict and even deposit sediment in the wrong places, causing drastic miscalculations. I modeled this for them to scale. And as you can see, the Mississippi uh, sediment tracing would not be accurate on their model, having to travel against gravity two miles. They use flat styrofoam boards, but their model should have been curved like this here. Unfortunately, there are science deniers called flat earthers, and they'll make silly suggestions like, why don't you just turn the earth to make it work? Or they will claim that if we did turn the earth, water would fall off. I mean, these people can't be serious. The reality, though, is that you would take the start point and the end point to determine the curvature rate in between those two points. And that will determine how far the water must go against gravity to continue its course. Now, some flat earthers will claim that it's okay for the model to be flat simply because gravity would affect a smaller scale model than it would a, well, the full Earth. But that's simply not true because we know that gravity pulls equally down towards the center of mass of the Earth. Everybody knows that. And gravity affects a feather and bowling ball and pulls them down at the same rate. So it really... Gravity doesn't care about the scale or the mass of the object, so they're debunking their theory again and also debunking their crazy notion that gravity is actually buoyancy and density. Where do these people even come from? Now, a lot of flat earthers like to bring up the Nile stretching from Tanzania to Egypt going north. They say, well, the Nile couldn't make it over the curved hill. <laughs> but you see, Earth is Earth. Whether it's the curvature of the earth, whether it be a hill, whether it be a mountain, or even a big hill that stretches for miles going gradually up, uh, the water doesn't care, okay? It simply does not care. This just comes from the mind of uneducated people who possibly didn't stay in college long enough for the science to sink deeply in, right? For the Nile, that is easy. All you do is take the velocity plus the speed of the river times how fast the river is moving with the cubic depth average of a, over 100 kilometers. Then you divide that number, the average, into the total length of the river. Then you square that by 33 degrees and you divide all that by 18.01528G slash MOL, and MOL stands for molecules, of course. And we find that as the Nile runs its course, its mass is able to counter the gravity that it's resisting against going up the hill. And something interesting also happens. See, we got to count the Nile River as one mass unit. So as the Nile goes over the hill, or the curvature rate of the Earth, it's also being one mass unit, it's pulling itself all the way through into one continuous motion running north. I mean, it's pretty simple. I think most people understand that, unless you're a flat earther, of course. So let's hope LSU finds their mistakes and saves Louisiana. This is Mike. Please like and subscribe.
this was uh, just sent to me today. He said, uh, military personnel here, we learn about the Coriolis effect, but it's never put into practice. It simply exists mathematically, but it does not apply to the real world. It can apply to a spinning model, sure, because the model on my table is real, a uh, tabletop globe, but not the ground I am standing on. And we hear this time and time again from military personnel and these folks at LSU did not model the curvature rate of the Earth into their model. Why? Because these liars, these scientists know that the Earth is not spinning and the Earth is indeed flat. And so they continue to do real world work, but they cannot account for their theory because if they add their theory in, things would be messed up, they wouldn't work, and even people would die.